I'm Robert Barnes from Spider Machines, and what we're talking about is pre-registration. And you'll notice by my film, it says, Film to Screen. This is a carrier sheet, and if there's a number one thing that people despise when they're trying to work with pre-registration systems, are these pesky carrier sheets. So if you look behind me, there's a whole wall of inventory carrier sheets hanging. So in reality, what we want to be able to do is to take the carrier sheet out of the process. And if we can eliminate the carrier sheet, then also by going directly to the screen, taping the film to the screen, we eliminate the, the apparatus that is in the exposure unit. So up next, we're going to take you step by step through that. So pre-registration systems, in this case we're, we're looking at the M&R and it has a turns uh, punch bar here. So the carrier sheet gets placed on the pins, which sometimes can be tricky and you can easily damage the carrier sheet by not getting it onto the pins uh, correctly. So we set the carrier sheet down and then we would line the artwork up. In this case it shows us where the pallet is. So we line up the artwork, center it, find our grid line it up and then we tape it on and if we were dealing with a, a multiple color job obviously we would leave this down we would set the next carrier sheet and get another carrier sheet and we would set it on top of that one and then we put the next piece of artwork on. so after we've we've got our artwork mounted to our carrier sheet like that we then go to the exposure so what we're going to show you with the film to screen is how the film actually instead of dealing with a carrier sheet like this gets taped directly to the screen. So the system was set up uh, for a Newman roller primarily so it depends if you have the older Newman roller frames uh, you'll notice in these two cases same color different diameter so whether you're using the MZX or the M3 they're the same dimension physically but the corners are much different. But the system, the film positioning uh, unit that we have, accommodates both size uh, diameter of rollers. So whichever one you're, you're using in your shop, in this case they're using three, three different ones in this shop. But, so we're gonna install, install, install the screen. And you'll notice that there are these spring plungers which drive, which drive the screen into the corners. And this is based on the trial lock. So it's three mechanical points just like a trilock board uh, out on the press. So once this is uh, in place, it's held, you don't have to hold it, you don't have to do anything. You can simply uh, take your artwork and align it, align it to the registration marks, as we're doing here. Obviously I don't do this every day, but somebody that did is very proficient at it. So just like you would with your carrier sheet, and you tape on your artwork, and then this screen is done. It's, it's ready to expose. So once you put the film directly to the screen, there's no need for the carrier sheet. There's no need for the apparatus that's mounted to the glass. And the screen is ready. Now if you wanted to expose this screen with a right or left chest image, you would simply turn the screen around, put it back in, lock the screen in place, and then you can tape your chest print. You can mount your chest print and tape it directly to the screen. Once again, film to screen. And you tape that on. And this is a huge advantage to film to screen is that you can expose two images on the same frame. One be it, say, your left chest, one be your full back. And that screen doesn't need to be rotated or manipulated. And we'll show you uh, how you would attempt to do that uh, with a carrier sheet system, which makes it very, very difficult. But this is, this is certainly uh, an easier system overall. Now we filmed the screen, we're already done. So our process is, is finished, we're ready to expose. But unfortunately with carrier sheets and a, and a pin system, uh, you have to have this apparatus mounted to the glass. And this is another point where things can shift and get out of skew. So you have to take your carrier sheet with your artwork and you mount it onto your turns pin punch. 
put it on the pins. And once again, you always stand the chance of damaging the pins, which can damage the carrier sheet, which can obviously knock your artwork out. Now when you think about this, we have to take, take the screen, we have to place it into the glass, push it, uh, push it in, and one of, the, one of the troubles with this system is a lot of times it actually gets stuck. It, it doesn't bring the screen all the way into position. So you want to make sure that this is fully in position. You also have to make sure that you didn't shift your film, that your film stayed uh, put. Now you'll close down your exposure unit, uh, draw your vacuum down, and, and do your exposure. But if you wanted to do two images on the same screen, there's a little trick. You actually have to place on here something that will block the light so that when you do your second exposure, you can expose this on top. So what ends up happening is you've got to block it, expose it, and take this carrier sheet out, place your right chest or left chest in position, and then turn the screen and expose it again. Because if you try to expose it bottom and top or top and bottom, then they won't line up based on the, the three mechanical points of the trilock. So then you would have rotated your screen, placed it, placed it back in, lined it up, and then drew your vacuum down and re-exposed again. So the steps with carrier sheets are much longer than film to screen. And as we pan the camera this way, you get rid of a mountain, a mountain of all these carrier sheets hanging. And that's one of the reasons why film to screen is becoming a choice. Now, when you look at direct to screen, a $60,000, $70,000 machine that's directly imaging uh, onto the screen, and you compare that to film to screen, well, film to screen is a few thousand dollar investment, both in time and energy, where the other way with direct, uh, direct to screen, you're looking at $60,000, $70,000. So when you balance that out, if you really think that you're a candidate to go computer to screen or direct to screen, you owe it to yourself to try film to screen first and use it as a stepping stone before making such a large capital investment. So a few thousand dollars, opposed to 60 or 70 thousand, gets you the benefits of on press. Because what they're gonna sell you at a trade show is, oh, if you use computer to screen or direct to screen, you get so much more efficiency on press. Well, with film to screen, you get that same efficiency because you're taking the film just like the computer is putting it right on the emulsion. You're taking the film and you're placing it directly on the emulsion. So you owe it to yourself to see if you're really gonna get those benefits because you have to train your people to get the benefits with direct to screen or computer to screen. Same goes with film to screen and same goes with the uh, M&R Trilock or the Newman pin using carrier sheets. Biggest problem there is there's a lot of steps to it and there's more chance of error. So going direct to the screen, film to screen will give you those kind of benefits.